In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the specific filtration products that you can get out there on the market. I've picked three different products that I've used from time to time, but I am going to give you some list and wholesale prices, and we're going to talk about the specifications for these three different products, and hopefully that will give you an idea of some of the variation that's available out there on the market. The first thing that we're going to talk about here is a Rainbird product, and it's called the 1800 Drip Irrigation Retrofit Kit. We just refer to it as the 1800 Retro. And basically, it is a pressure reducing filter that is made in the form of a spray body. This is the exact same size and everything that would fit a Rainbird 1800 spray body so that you can take this filter and pressure regulator out and drop it down into a regular 1800 spray body and adapt a spray zone or whatever over into a drip zone. So what we have here is a, a 200 mesh filter, okay? And um, let's take one moment and define a couple of these terms before we get too far into this. When you get a mesh size on a, a filter or some other type of product, what the mesh size refers to are the number of openings on a linear inch. Now, listen to what I'm saying. It's a linear inch, not a cubic inch. So the mesh size, if you take one line, one inch long, and count the number of openings along that line, that'll get you the mesh size. Now, that's in opposition to the micron size. What the micron size refers to is the size of the particle that can make it through the screen, make it through the mesh. So <clears throat> the definition of a micron is one millionth of a meter. It's also called a, a micrometer, but it's also one thousandth of a millimeter. So we're talking about a very small thing here. And when you're looking at the options, and we'll show it on one of the products here in uh, just a moment, but as you look at the mesh size, as the mesh size increases, the particle size decreases because as the mesh size increases, you have more holes in the same amount of space. So that means each hole is going to be smaller. So as we look at a chart here in a minute, you'll see that. Uh, but I just want to reiterate, as the mesh size goes up, the particle size comes down. I know that's a little bit confusing to people who are looking at purchasing a filter and trying to decide what size of screen that they should use. Some of these products only come with one particular size and there's no option to buy other ones. So let's get back here to the 1800 Retro. And like I said, this is a, a filtration piece. It has the 200 micron screen, but it also has a a uh, pressure reducer in the cap here. And this reduces it down to 30 PSI. And as you look at pressure reducing uh, fittings or features for drip, you can get them ranging from 25 PSI to maybe 40 PSI with a lot of different stops in between. And that's the, the value that the pressure is gonna be reduced down to. Now on this particular product, um, Rainbird recommends that you keep the inlet pressure coming into this device between 15 and 70 PSI. The flow rating for this is between a half a gallon, 0.5 gallons per minute, and 4 gallons per minute. So if you need a particularly high flow into a drip zone, maybe this isn't the product for you, but this is a very clever product and I use it all the time for adapting over places that used to be a spray zone and now need drip instead. So with this product here in the bag, you get a couple of different things that's going to help you put this together and adapt over to drip. You get a, a street elbow, a threaded street elbow, so that you can put this on the top and change the directions. You also have a included here what's called the, the MDC coupling. And it's the, the name of the product is now called the, the Easy Fit Compression System. And um, it used to be called the, the multi-diameter compression, meaning that there's a number of different sizes of half-inch tubing that'll fit into these. It has kind of a plastic flange system inside. So if you're needing to put together two pieces of pipe that might be slightly different or from different manufacturers, this is a good product to have. But 
if you're using a, a size that would adapt directly over to Rainbird half inch pipe, then you can use this one here. And these systems, they work nicely together. This one screws onto the end of the street elbow. And if you put it together on this, you could go directly over to drip or fit this in. This is part of the easy fit compression system. And this uh, pushes in and snaps. And then you can go to a different size piece of tubing on this side. So this is basically the, the 1800 retrofit kit. And the, the list price on this is $30. If you were just a homeowner and you walked out to a professional uh, outlet and you paid list price around $30 plus tax, but the wholesale that a professional could go to an outlet and get if you're an irrigation professional is about $18 plus tax. So well worth the money. It's a great product. Now we're going to talk about a typical Y filter. This is Y as in the English letter Y. And these come in different formations here, this style. It may be Y, it may just be as in a T formation with a larger bucket on top. And you get a, a couple of different features that can come on this. Some of them will have a little indicator on top that shows you whether it's clean or dirty with a little you know, green piece there. But all, the only thing that you're going to see on this one is it's got a a place on top to where you could put a ball valve. So while this is under pressure, if you needed to flush this out, you could open the ball valve. Or you could put a, um, a solenoid, an electric solenoid valve on here and attach it to the system so that as your irrigation system goes through the zones every time, it'll blow this out. Because as we mentioned in the previous lesson, you need to have a plan for the maintenance and the cleaning of these filters because if you just leave them there, they'll get clogged up and reduce your flow down to zero. And it can cause problems with the system, with the pump, with the valve, and so forth. So we definitely want a plan to clean these out. But if you would put a, a, a threaded three quarter inch uh, solenoid valve on here, then you could flush it every time the system runs, or you could just put a ball valve on so that when the system is running, you can just walk out and flush it out and it'll blow all of this stuff out of here. I'm going to show you how this thing actually works. This is the cup that screws off of here. And there is a filter down inside of here. Now, what we're going to look at here is a 150 mesh screen. And this particular filter, it has a max operating pressure of 120 PSI. So basically what happens is, is the water, the direction of flow on this, it's usually stamped somewhere on the body. So you definitely need to pay attention to the direction of flow. If you put this thing in backwards, it may not work or may not work as intended. So what happens is, is the water comes through here. And then once this is seated down in there, it forces the water through the bottom comes into the cup and gets pushed outward from the cup. And then as the water is on the outside of the cup inside this basket, it flows out the other end. Of course, it's under pressure. And um, what, what's going to happen here, you know, sometimes you need to pay attention to the amount of pressure loss that's going to happen. So let me put this into perspective. Some, some filters have greater amounts of pressure loss in it because of either the size of the screen or the configuration of the body of it. But on this particular one, if you've got 10 gallons per minute flowing through it, you're going to have PSI loss of about three and a half PSI. But if you get up to 15 gallons per minute through this, then you're going to have six and a half PSI of loss. So <clears throat> If you push this on up to 20 gallons per minute, and I think the upper rating on this is 18 or so, but then you start getting close to 9 or 10 uh, PSI loss through this. So definitely pay attention to the pressure and flow that you're pushing through this. Okay, so it's a fine product. I've used it all the time. The list price on this, if you were a homeowner, walked in off the street, you'd pay about $27.50 for it in U.S. dollars. But if you're a professional, you'd pay about $16.50 for it. It's a fine product. I've put, I mean, who knows how many of these out in the field and they do fine. It's just that when I go back to service these systems, you have to remember to clean these things out or instruct the homeowners to do the cleaning. Okay. The next product that we're going to talk to is the Twist to Clean by Lakos 
L-A-K-O-S. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but this is a very good filter. I've placed this on irrigation systems, and in the past, I've also attached this onto house systems that may have their water supply coming through a well that has a lot of particulate matter, sand or micaceous sand or something that comes through here. And if you don't filter it before it gets into the house, it can build up in your water heater. It can clog up the little screens on your faucets and so forth. So this is a nice one to put. There are other different types of filtration that happen. We'll talk about that in just a second. But this particular one here, it's a one inch unit and it comes with two one inch female adapters and a little bit of Teflon tape for installation. And, uh, you know, on these ones that have the, the clear baskets on it, when you go to glue these in, you know, because uh, on the other end, you're going to need to glue the female adapter, or you may convert over and just do all threaded. But if you're using glue and primer anywhere near this, I would take this clear basket off just just for looks, you know what I mean? Because if you're dripping stuff on this, it looks pretty nasty. So I would take this off until I got the um, the gluing done. I'd probably also take the filter off here. So let's talk about what we're looking at here. And what you have here is this is a 60 mesh that comes with this at 250 microns. So let's take a look here at a chart because you have a, a few different options that can come with this. And as you see from this chart, as the mesh size increases, the particle size that can make it through the screen decreases. So if you're having problems with this and you know, you're not getting enough flow through it or it gets clogged too quickly or just screens out more than you want it to, then you can get one of the optional screens, larger or smaller size, and put it on there and adjust this down to where you want it. Some of the ones that, that I've shown uh, previously don't have the optional screens that you can buy, but this particular one does. And several different manufacturers offer optional screen sizes with it. So let's put this back together here. Make sure this is sealed up nicely. And they like this one to be mounted in a, a vertical position. And what happens is, the, the twist to clean feature on this, so what happens is, is you just flip up this little lever here, and to flush it, it's a quarter turn clockwise, and what it does is it withdraws this from the little fitting here and will flush it out. Because all of the particles are on the outside, it'll flush all of this stuff out through here. The way that this one works is the water comes and then goes in through the filter and out, so it's easy to flush the particles off the outside. But if you're getting some organic matter, let's see if you're filtering the lake water, you will have bits of organic matter that build up on here. And if this is out in the sun, you know, you'll get some algae that builds up and starts to accumulate on this as well. So you have the option to get a sleeve that fits over this that's black to keep the sunlight off of that to keep algae from building up. But it just may happen naturally because of the water and the organic matter that you're pulling up. So you may want to take this off and scrub it with a toothbrush once or twice a year just to keep it clean. The ones that I know of on lake systems, they clog up pretty frequently and need to be cleaned at least two, if not three times a year, uh, just from, you know, the way that lakes work as far as the, the organic particles that settle to the bottom. And if you've got a particularly strong pump, it can pull stuff up off the bottom and into the system. So let's close this back here. And one of the things that you can do, and the places that I have these installed underneath the house, then you'll want to put a fitting on here and rub, run some flexible tubing outside of the foundation so that when you uh, blow this out and clear all the stuff out of it, it goes somewhere other than underneath the house. So, um, and, and a lot of times you'll be in situations like that, and maybe you want to run the tubing back into the lake or the pond or whatever you're drawing water from just to keep the area from, you know, getting muddy or whatever. So, and a couple other bits of information on this. Um, this particular one has a maximum operating pressure of 100 PSI. And the price on this, if you went out there and paid a list for it, is about $87 plus tax. And wholesale price on that to professionals is about $52 plus tax. Just one other thing that I wanted to point out, and you don't see a lot of them on the market for irrigation, but um, the most common thing that you're going to find is these type of screen filters. You, what you may also see out there is a type of filter that is a stack of discs, plastic discs that 
on a uh, section like this may have 150 discs on there and it forces the water out through the disc and the disc because they're pushed together trap the particles and so that type of filter works pretty well I personally just like these type of screen filters because you can see what's going on with the kind with the discs you really have to take everything apart and clean it and get your toothbrush down in there and really clean it out whereas these are a little bit easier to deal with so again, there are a number of different products that are on the market out there. Be familiar with them. Check the specifications to make sure that the, the flow range is going to be what you need. The inlet pressure is going to be acceptable. And, um, and it just works out for the situation. So um, I hope I've given you a, a good bit of detail about the different types of filters that are out there on the market. Let's take just a minute and talk about some of the valves that you might be using for drip zones. You can buy combination kits that have a valve and a filter connected here. It's usually just a threaded connection that's put together for you that you can purchase as one unit. And it can come with a pressure reducer or without a pressure reducer on it. Sometimes you just get the, the valve and the filter. And one thing that you ought to keep in mind is that just because this is called a, a drip kit, you know, a drip irrigation zone control kit is what some of them are called. But don't necessarily, you know, imagine that this is a low flow valve. They make lower flow valves that take care of drip systems that aren't flowing a whole lot of water through that. I mean, this is a type of valve here. We're looking at a, a, a rainbird valve. And this is designed for regular flows. But let's say that you've put together a residential system. You've got several big rotor zones flowing about 14, 15, 16 gallons per minute. But you have one little bed, one little area of some annual flowers, and you want to put it on its own zone so that you can use a little bit of drip or micro spray to keep those flowers happy. They have different water requirements than turf or, you know, ornamental bushes and stuff like that. Annual flowers need just a little bit of water every day to keep those roots going because they're not very deep and you don't expect them to get very deep when you plant an annual flower. So would you use the same value? valve for a zone that's only flowing two gallons per minute versus the other zones that are flowing 15 or 16 gallons per minute. You probably wouldn't. Um, and the reason is that some of these regular valves, when you get down into very low flows, the valves will start chattering or maybe they won't even open up at all. But almost all the manufacturers make a low flow version and then sometimes they'll put those into kits. My only point is don't assume that you're buying a drip zone control kit that it's low flow. Check the specifications and usually there's a marking of some kind. On Rainbird you'll see a, a yellow or orange a sticker right here on the top that indicates that it's low flow. And usually when you're getting variations of this product they also make a version of this product to be used with dirty water or reclaimed water and those have purple components on it. So if you're getting beyond the regular normal you know residential valves or residential products or whatever they'll usually be marked in some way but just make sure that you know what you're getting and then that you match up the components with what you're actually using on the drip zone. I promise you it'll work out a whole lot better if you do, especially if you pay attention to this, because there's nothing worse than go ahead and installing all your valves, putting everything together, and then you got one zone that's acting up and kind of makes you look like a fool in front of your client. Whereas if you just pay just a couple of minutes of attention on the front end and purchase the right parts, they're barely any more expensive than the regular parts. But I promise you, your job and your business is going to go a whole lot better if you pay attention and put the right parts in the right situation.